everyone. Hello. Um, if you can hear me okay, if you can write hello or yes, you can hear me in the chat box, that would be great. So we can just test that everyone can hear and see me okay. Perfect. So people are saying hello, hi. <clears throat> Perfect. Hendra said clearly. So that's great. I'm glad you can hear me okay. Perfect. Um, Kareem said, is this the same webinar from this morning? Yes, it is. There was one this morning and this is the second one of the day. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So lots and lots of people joining us from lots of different places. Croatia, Argentina. We'll have a look in a minute at where everyone's from. Um, so welcome. Hello, everyone. And welcome to today's webinar on how to teach online with Gold Experience Second Edition. So just a few housekeeping things to mention before we start. So this webinar is recorded and the link to the recording as well as your attendance certificates will be sent out to you via email um, within two weeks of this event. Um, normally it's a bit shorter than that, but we say within two weeks after the event. So that will be emailed to you. So because of the current situation much of the world is in at the moment, Pearson are offering a variety of free webinars such as this one, blogs, videos, and general CPD materials that will hopefully help you during this time with both your online teaching and your professional development as well. So you can just head over to english.com forward slash online learning, which is on the screen here, and you'll find all of that support, all of those resources on there as well. Okay, so before we begin the webinar, let's just get to know each other a little bit. So where are you all from? I know some of you are saying that already, um, but it'd be good if you could say who you actually teach online at the moment. So is it one-to-one -one classes, is it group classes, and how many people are in those group classes if you are teaching those? Perfect, so we've got Belen from Spain, Maria, Argentina, lots of people coming in from Argentina, Mexico, China, Spain. So a lot of people saying they teach one-to-one -one students, group classes, 15 to 19 students. Um, some people said 20, up to 20 students. I can imagine that's quite challenging to have that many students online. Um, 10, 24, 10, more than 30. Woof. Imagine that's quite hard to, to, <laughs> to maintain 30 students. Perfect. So lots of people coming from everywhere. So thank you for attending today and good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. So um, just a little bit about me before we begin. So my name is Billy and I've been teaching around the world for the past eight years, just in different countries. So some of the ones you've mentioned, China, Italy, Spain, um, and I'm now based in the UK in Cambridge. Um, I mainly taught exam classes to different age groups, so one-to-one -one and also larger classes as well. Um, and I've also written materials for some well-known course books and apps. So I actually wrote a lot of the material for Gold Experience on the app here that we'll talk about later. Um, and also some of the photocopyable and extra activities like the video things, which are at the end of each unit. So let's begin. So first of all, um, let's have a look at what Gold Experience is and what it can offer you when you're teaching online. So some of you may have used this course book in class already and are now looking to teach it online. Some of you may be new to the course itself um, and new to online teaching, as some of you have mentioned. Um, or maybe some of you have the course book but are not actually sure how you can teach with the print book online. So let's have a look at a quick breakdown of Gold Experience as a course itself, if you are new to it. So there are eight levels in total, ranging from A1 to C1, as you can see the front covers here. And the books cover all of the Cambridge exams along the way. So we have A1, which prepares students for the Cambridge Young Learners Movers exam. Uh, A2 prepares students for the Key for Schools. A2 plus bridges that gap between key and preliminary. And there's also a B1 plus and a B2 plus as well to help students take that step to the next level. So B1 prepares students for the preliminary for schools exam, while B2 prepares students for the B2 first for schools and C1 and also B2 work towards achieving the C1 advanced certificate. So let's have a look in more detail about what each course book contains. So there are nine levels 
nine units per level, sorry, eight levels in total, and a tenth review unit, which revises what the students have already learned, the vocabulary, the grammar, and it also hones in on the skills as well. So of course it does depend how many online hours you have per week or per day with your students, and that does depend on how long it will take you to get through the material. However, one unit could take you at three to four weeks plus. There is an ample material on there, um, digitally and in print, obviously when you go back to your real life classrooms, but digitally wise, this could last you three to four weeks per unit. So each unit has a lesson per page, and there's lots and lots of different resources that we'll have a look at in more detail online that you can provide extra support for students, extra material to provide that independent study that we're looking for more now we're teaching online and also to challenge students further as well. So it really does depend how fast your students work or how quickly they need to progress as to how quickly you should go through each unit. So let's just have a quick look at how the units are divided. So each lesson is skills based. So as you can see here, we've got reading and grammar. And these are examples from the B2 course book, which we'll use mostly throughout this presentation. Next, we've got use of English. No, nope, we have vocabulary and listening, sorry. Um, and again, these appear in all eight levels. Then we move on to use of English and speaking. And in the higher levels, so B2, B2 plus, C1, we do have the use of English, um, one and two. So it gives you that extra practice there, but of course not in the lower levels as the exams are a little bit different in content. And then we have the speaking page as well. Then we have a writing double page spread, but we've just put one here to look at. And then at the end of each unit is a section called switch on. So this green part in the middle here, and there's a video and some activities for students to complete, um, which is really good for sort of building collaboration between students. They could have sort of a breakout session, which we'll talk about a bit later. And then each unit ends with an independent learning uh, section, which is really good for students to reflect and also to build goals. Um, and also it's very good to encourage that independent learning whilst we're teaching online at the moment too. There's also a unit review, which I haven't included here, but that comes at the end of every unit as well. So let's think about how we can access all of our course book materials online. But firstly, I just wondered, have you guys used the Pearson online portal before? So if you could just write in the chat box if you've used it, whether it's in class or whether it's online. Yeah, so I like the big capital letters with the exclamation marks, yes. Um, so mixed, some people saying yeah, some people no, uh, in class, yeah. So as Camilla said, yeah, she's used it in class, but maybe we don't know how to incorporate that into our online classes. So um, a bit of a mix, some people have, some people haven't used it. So let's have a look at it in more detail, how we can access it and what it actually contains as well. Okay, so let's have a look how students can access the portal, first of all. So inside the front cover of the student's book, students will be able to see step-by-step -step instructions similar to this um, on how to access the portal itself. So firstly, the books need to be the online ready versions. There are two versions. One doesn't come with any digital components. And then the other is online ready, so you do have access to the portal. So just double check the inside cover of the student's book or the teacher's book to see if you have that ability. So you go to english.com forward slash activate. So the site we have on screen and they'll need to sign in if they already or if they already have an account, they can sign in or if not, they can create an account. And on the left hand side of their screen, once they've logged in, I've just put a screen grab here, you'll see that it says add a product. So the students will see this. So they'll need to click this icon and then enter their access code, which is on the inside front cover of their books. So it's at the top on the inside front cover. Then every time they sign in, they'll be able to click on the cover of their book, which will appear on their dashboard as soon as they sign in and they can begin learning from there. So that's how the students access it. And here's an example of me as a student 
once I've logged in. So this is what I can see here. So I can see that my teacher is teaching me the B2 Gold Experience book. So I've added my product and it just appears on the dashboard once I've logged in. So students can also download the app, which we'll look at in more detail a little bit later on. But first of all, let's see how they can actually get the app. So students can download it from iOS, Android, Google Store, whatever they have um, for their app store on their phone. It's completely free. And once they've installed it, they'll need to enter the unlock code, which again is on the inside cover of the student's book. So do be aware that it is different to the portal access codes. So we have the portal access code at the top, and then we have the student app code at the bottom. So just make sure that they're using the right code for that in order to access it. But we'll talk about the app a little bit later on. So for teachers to access the portal, it's actually more or less the same as how the students access it. So again, you'll need to look on the inside cover of your teacher's book if you have that with you. Um, follow the steps and scratch off the code to enter the site just with a coin or something like that. Then you'll have access to the digital version of your course book as it appears in print, but digitally. And there's lots and lots of interact interactive activities that you can build your classes with as well. So it does save a lot of time and effort with planning, which can sort of accumulate more hours um, as we're online teaching. And again, we'll have a look at the resources in just a moment as well. OK, so if anyone does have any questions about the access, please do feel free to write any questions in the chat box and I'll try and answer them as we go along. But if not, I will save some time at the end for questions as well. OK, so when you first log on, um, you will see. When you log on as a teacher. You'll see this dashboard here once you've clicked on the book that you use. So it will say presentation tool and resources. So I've circled resources there. So it's the one on the right hand side. So the presentation tool we'll look at in just a moment. But the resources that are available are audio, which come from the student's book, um, workbook and the exam practice uh, booklet as well. We have video on there, grammar presentations. There's a big assessment package. Um, which there's diagnostic tests, end of uh, unit tests and review tests. There's word lists as well, so you can make sure you've covered all the vocabulary for that unit. And there's extra homework activities which you can assign and are automatically graded, which again we'll look at in just a moment. So you can share your screen and teach through here if you'd like to, but there's also ways that you can get students to join the class online, which we'll look at a little bit later. So if you do teach via a platform like Skype or Zoom, for example, you can just simply share your screen and students will be able to see exactly what you're doing and teach that way. So there's also something which I find really, really useful on there. And I've used quite a few times um, are the grammar presentations. This is one of my favorite features on the portal because I find it really time saving. And it's also um, one of those situations where you're teaching online. Maybe you don't have a whiteboard with you, so you can't write the form and the use of the grammar, for example. So the grammar presentations are downloadable. You can use them offline if you want to have a look at them before you teach. Or again, as we said, you can share your screen as well. So I think these are important because teaching grammar can be a little bit tedious um, online in online classes, particularly as some of you said you do have very, very large classes. So typically the teacher teaches the grammar and in a real life classroom, students can collaborate and interact with each other and sort of figure it out themselves. Maybe they have a pre-existing knowledge of it. But maybe in an online class, there's no sort of interactivity unless you do do breakout rooms. Um, so, yeah, I think these grammar presentations are really good. And it also sort of provides something visual for learners to look at as well. So here you can see that I've taken a sample from the B2 book. And this breaks down the form and the use of conditionals with some examples on there as well. So they are just PowerPoint presentations that you can download um, or you can just share your screen from the portal. So maybe you've used these in your real world classrooms, just projecting it at the front. Um, but yeah, there, there's lots of grammar activities that students can practice in the student's book. But I think these just break it down a little bit more, which is very helpful. OK, so that's grammar, but listening can be a little bit tricky to teach online sometimes. 
So I have a question for you. How do you practice listening online in your uh, online classes? If you could just write in the chat box. Um, while you're writing, I'll just answer Catalina's question here. Uh, the code is the same in every student's book. I believe they're all different. Um, so yeah, just just make sure that they've they've got the right one at the top rather than the student's app. Okay, so we've got use the audio on the portal and share the sound. Yeah, send the audio before. That's quite useful, actually. If there is a place that you've downloaded some audio or a link that you can give to the students, that's one way to do it as well. Um, films in English as homework. I think it's good to, to give homework as listening, although we can never be sure that students are actually going to do it. Um, as someone mentioned here, uploading the files in a drive folder. That's a very, very good. I would definitely recommend setting up a shared or a uh, drive folder or Dropbox or something where students can just add materials and you can add to them as well so that students can download them. Um, yeah, choosing the films they enjoy. That's, that's one of the things. Um, sharing my screen. Yeah. So to provide listening practice with the portal, um, we said that we've got access to audio and video on there. So you'll find switch on videos in the students book in each unit. So units one to nine. So there's also some grammar vox pop videos. So interviews in the street that can help with accent practice, dialect, maybe if you're doing some pronunciation, maybe connected speech or something like that. Um, and there's also a speaking test video you can use as well. So it's broken down into four parts. You could get students to watch that. And maybe you could send them the marking scheme and get them to, to read along and compare their own grades, how they would grade the students. Um, and then you could feedback, feedback on that in the class to practice their speaking skills and also their listening skills as well. And just to put them in that exam situation, because I think it's very easy maybe to forget at home that they are preparing for an exam. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very useful to look at the speaking video, or maybe set that as homework as some of you have said. Also, it provides something, again, for visual learners that we, that we mentioned earlier. So we can practice listening through video, but we can also use the audio and share the screen, as lots of you said. Um, so you can access the audio from the course book uh, on the teachers and the students portal to practice the activities. So you could play it uh, on the conference call and mute the students so they're not sort of talking over it. Or you could set them for homework or you could assign them through the portal, which we'll look at in just a moment, um, for self-study or for something that's automatically graded. And then students can practice this themselves, or you can revisit the answers in the next lesson as well. So all of the audio is available to be played offline as well, so you can download it if you want to. There's also lots of photocopyable activities that you can access, which are useful for encouraging students to collaborate and learn from each other without you sort of instructing them through it. So you could set up a breakout session. So in your online lesson, allow students to set up their own conference calls or work together to complete an activity. So I've put an example here, again, from the B2 book of A Time When. So these are all at the back of the student's book or they're on your resources section of your portal. So, for example, students could talk about a time when uh, an event, holiday or trip was cancelled, <laughs> ironically. Um, and then here they talk about it in the past simple, past continuous, present perfect and things like that. Then you can feedback in the uh, main lesson on this just to encourage a bit of interactivity between students and to keep them motivated. So there's also an assessment package on the portal, which you can download um, at the top. You'll see that there's a white toolbar that says download all assessment package. So it says open and then that downloads it as a zip to your computer. Um, you can share the screen and do it as a whole class to make sure the students aren't cheating. Um, there's diagnostic tests for the beginning of the course if you need that. There's end of unit tests as well, which you could do at the end of the week or the end of the month, for example or even end of year tests, which cover the majority of the content of the book. So you could do that as sort of an overall test, maybe before the eventuality of going back to the real life classroom. There's also a full exam practice test, which again can be done um, if you want to sort of timed 
in the lesson or you could set tasks as extra practice for homework and you can share your screen or you can send it to the students, whichever you prefer. And there are also um, extra homework activities for each unit and also to practice each skill as well. You can also do it for task types. You can see here we've got use of English 1 and use of English 2 as corresponds to the student's book. So if you feel your students do just need that bit of extra practice, often as they do with the use of English, you can direct them um, to here. You can send that. You can upload it to your shared file or share your screen as well. So that just encourages a little bit more independent learning, which we're really trying to encourage now. Students are sort of in charge of their own learning in a respect because we're not there sort of spoon feeding them as much as we might do in the classroom sometimes. So we are just trying to encourage them to study when they're ready, of course, and when, they're, when they've got the energy to do it, but also just to put in a little bit of work outside of class where possible, if, if guided by us. OK, so we've looked at the resources available on the portal, um, but now let's see how we can teach from the student's book itself. So first of all, when you log into your portal as a teacher, you'll see the presentation tool button. So before we looked at the resources on the right, but now we've got the presentation on the left, which I've circled in black here. So when you click on a unit that you've decided you want to teach, you can work your way from front to back or you can choose a different unit, maybe unit three, for example. So you click on plan and then you'll see that on the bottom right hand corner here, you have your teacher's notes, which you can look at before the lesson. There are some extra activities in there and things. So you can have a look at the teacher's notes before the lesson and see the focus of each lesson and just read those notes before you begin. Or to begin a lesson with the students, you can press teach, which is the blue button here. And your students will be able to join the class and we'll have a look at how to do that in just a moment. So once you've done this, once you've pressed teach, you'll see your first activity come up. So this is actually the first exercise of unit two of the B2 uh, course book. So normally you'll see the dub double page spread in the student's book, but there are yellow icons next to it, which you can click on, which focuses on one activity in particular. So in the course book, this may just look like pictures at the top with a couple of discussion questions, but on the portal, you can focus on things in more detail. And it also extends the lesson as well, which is perfect for online classes. So, uh, yeah, you can focus on each individual exercise, which here, for example, I focused on the lead in, which can be done as a teacher student discussion, for example, in one to one lessons, which some of you said you're teaching. Um, you could have your students think about their answers, or go to a breakout room and then come back and feedback as a class before you move on to the next uh, activity. There are also model answers available for students as well for speaking activities, which you just click sample answers at the bottom and then students can compare their ideas and maybe even get some new vocabulary out of it as well. As we have here, for example, St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow is imposing. OK, so to move through activities, you can use two different ways. So most commonly, you'll see the lesson flow toolbar at the bottom, which shows the tasks individually. So you can use this to access um, corresponding workbook activities as well. So you'll see just above the yellow icon that I've got at the bottom, it says student's book and to the right workbook. So you can access those on there as well. And it's quite easy to move through them. So you can click on the page view on the left to allow students to follow along in their print books. If they think, oh, I don't know where this activity has come from, you can press that and it appears as the full page spread that students would be able to see. And then all of the lesson attachments are available for each activity if you need them by clicking the attachment icon, which is just uh, to the left here of show answer. So for this, for multiple matching, this is my exam tip, but most likely I would need my reading text. So if I clicked on that button, it would take me to the reading text as well. OK, so there's lots of tools that we can also use on there as well. 
Um, so teaching tools which we can use to add sort of a bit of dynamism to the class as well. So you'll see a menu on the left of your screen and these are your teaching tools. So they give you the ability to draw things, to erase things, um, even to write things as well. You can highlight things on there which might be particularly useful, for example, for a reading text. So once students have fed back the answers to you and tell you where they found it in the text, you can highlight it for all of the students to see as well. You also have a timer function, which you can use to time exam tasks or exercises in general, maybe brainstorming activities, or even if you do do a breakout session, just to remind students how long they've got until they need to come back. And you can also use this as a stopwatch as well if you are doing sort of fast paced timed activity. Then we also have a school board, uh, which you can use to play games or add sort of a competitiveness to the class. And here I've used team A and team B, but you can add C, D, E, as many teams as you need for the amount of students in your class. So these tools are really, really useful just to draw attention to things in the class and also just to make sure students are feeling engaged whilst they're learning online as well. So once students have completed an activity, of course, they'll need the answers. So they'll need to get some feedback and obviously check through those answers as well. So you can reveal them one by one or you can show all of them at the same time. So just make sure you're clicking the right button if you want to do them one by one. So you'll see here at the bottom, we've got show answer and that shows you them one by one as I've got here or show all gives you all of them at the same time as well. So it just depends how you prefer to feedback. Okay, so thinking about feedback, I just wondered how you guys give feedback and mark uh, assignments and activities at the moment during online lessons. So how do you do that? So if you can just write some of your ideas in the chat box and I'll just give you a moment. OK, so Evelyn said she uses Edmodo, which is a really good platform to give feedback. Um, let's just wait for a couple more answers. So Lillian uses the portal. Perfect. So you'll you'll be up to date with this. Um, Zoom. OK, so Maria, I think maybe you, you maybe just orally give the feedback. Google Classroom is really good. Yeah. OK, Edmodo, Skype, Zoom, the portal. Yeah, correct, orally. What about any written feedback? How would you give that, for example? Microsoft Teams, comments by email, perfect. So Maria writes them all um, out. So I wonder if it's personalized or whether that's for the group. But I think, um, yeah, private messages is really good as well. I think, again, it really depends how much, how many students we have and how much we can give a personalized feedback. But if we don't have that much time, there are opportunities for the portal to uh, mark your mark your assignment. So we can have a look at that. And again, that reduces your marking time as well. OK, so you can assign activities which students can do for self-study or for homework that you set. So as I said, it's really useful because it doesn't require any marking from you at all. Only a couple of minutes to choose which tasks you want to assign related to what you've been teaching in the lessons or maybe as a precursor to what you're about to teach in the upcoming lessons as well. So first of all, you'll need to set up a class. So when you log on to your dashboard, you'll see it on this left screen here, there's an icon on the left hand side that says add new class. So you click on this, enter the name of your class, whatever it may be. And then this screen will appear here, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. So you can give this code to your students, however you prefer, maybe on the shared drive or maybe via email or however you prefer to, to contact your students. Um, and there's also a QR code. You can take a picture of it, but it's not really necessary because the QR code does actually appear on the students portal as well once you've invited to, them to the class. So this is an example of a class that I created called Webinar Class. Um, of course, I haven't got any students in it at the moment, but you can see uh, the tabs, the overview, so you'll be able to see who's in the class. 
and the assignments. So this is where you can set tasks. So you can create a new assignment by clicking one of the two links here. So the left hand icon or in this link in the sentence here, which says create a new assignment. So once you've done that, it will look like this. So the activities are either activities from the workbook, from the assessment package, which we had in the resources in your online portal, uh, homework activities in the resources area, as we looked at earlier, or maybe even from the student's book. If you've been teaching your online lesson, maybe you didn't get through everything that you wanted to. So you could send one particular task from the student's book via this platform as well. So you can select the tasks according to units. So here, for example, I've selected unit two. Um, and you can select them by skills as well as we've got reading, grammar, vocabulary. So it is broken down exactly uh, as the student's book units are as well. So you can send lots of tasks at once or you can, can send them individually. So I selected all and there were 453 activities. So maybe there's too many to send all at once. Um, but yeah, if you just click through the drop down menus and you can choose which activities you want to give them. So once you've done that, you can set a date for when they need to be delivered, how many times students can attempt the activity and you can add extra instructions such as any tips or strategies or things that you want to add for students to know about as well. So it's up to you how many times you will, you want to allow your students to attempt the task. For example, if it's something tricky, such as a part three or part four use of English with the sentence transformations, you might want to allow them two or three attempts. But if it's something a little bit easier, maybe one or two attempts might be enough. So once you've entered all of that information, there's an assign button, which I haven't included here, but it just is below the instructions. So you click assign and it directly goes to the student's portal. So now let's have a look at once you've sent that to the students, what they can see and how they can access those tasks that you've just sent them. So when students open their portal, this is what they'll see in the top left hand corner there. So you can access the audio from the student's book, workbook and exam practice book, which they might need for the homework that you've just set them. So students can also access uh, homework, which is the task that we've just assigned them. So it's really useful because we can see this red icon here, which tells them how many homework tasks they actually have to complete. So here, my example is two. So I can see in red that I have to complete those because my teachers set them for, them, for me. And once they've clicked on that, they'll be able to see when it's due so that they can make sure that they do it in time as well. So once students have completed assignments that you've set, they do automatically get graded by the system. So here you can see an example of the results of some completed homework activities. So students can see their average score, how many attempts they're allowed and the percentage they got on each skill as well, of course, depending on which activities you've set. So, for example, they can see how well they did in their reading compared to their speaking, compared to their listening, for example. I think this is really useful because students can build goals on these. Maybe they're not so good at their uh, reading, for example, but they're getting really high scores in their listening. So students can sort of um, self-direct their learning and they can try and encourage themselves and know that they have to practice that task a little bit better or that skill, for example. So it also breaks down the average score for vocabulary and grammar as well. Um, and once they, if they at attempt a task more than once, they can see the average score for each attempt to compare them as well. So they can see if they have progressed and got better as they've attempted each time. They can also see their highest and lowest scores as well. OK, so student app, let's have a look at that a little bit more. Um, but I just wondered, have your students used the app before? And if so, what did they use it for? Did you try and use it separate to the class or did the students um, want to use it in the class? So I'll just give you a moment. No, nobody's used it. Not a, OK, one person. Uh, so Lynn said yes. So Lynn, how did your students use it? Was it as a, a sort of a separate thing outside of class or? 
Okay. No, no. Nobody. Only only one or two so far. Interesting. Okay. Or maybe they've used it, but they just haven't said. Could be. Okay. They're using it now when online teaching, Zakia. That's really interesting, actually. Um, I guess because they, they're sort of getting into the digital learning a little bit more, maybe. Okay. So um, earlier we talked about how to access, but I'll just go through go through it quickly just in case someone um, joined late. So you can download it for free from your iOS or Android, Android store, depending on which system your students use. So just get them to search Gold Experience app and download that. Then on the inside cover of their student's book, there should be the two codes. The bottom code is for the app. The top code is for the portal. So just make sure they're entering the student's app code, which is at the bottom of their inside cover of their student's book. And it is totally free as well. OK, so let's see what's on the app. So the app is divided into the nine units from the student's book. And it includes a review after every three units as well, just to reinforce the vocabulary and grammar. So there's 10 to 15 uh, items per exercise. So the activities are divided into A and B activities. So two sets per set of vocabulary or grammar structure, for example. So around 25 to 30 activities for one set. So the first set focuses on students recognising the language and the second focuses on producing the language. So the first uh, set of activities might have drag and drop where students have to drag the word to complete a sentence. Could be multiple choice where students have to choose more than one answer. Could be a single choice. So there could be a question or a sentence or maybe even a definition and students have to choose the correct answer, just one. Um, and there's also listen and complete as well. So students hear a clip or an extract, then they either have to complete the sentence or complete the grammar structure correctly, for example. In the second uh, activity, so the B set, um, you have a production activity. So it could be practicing spelling. It could be um, writing the word, unscrambling the word, for example, typing in the word to complete the sentence. Um, so if you can, do have a look at it if you do have access to it, because it is really useful to know what your students are doing as well. The good thing about it is, again, we can encourage that independent learning as well. So something extra to practice outside of the classroom. You could even set it as homework. Tell the students that you can see their results. They don't know. <laughs> um, or provide immediate feedback as well, because it is instantly graded. And it's very good because once they've done the A activities, they can see what their results are, then try to produce the language and see their progress in the next activity. So if students are able to use it, do direct them towards it as there's lots and lots of extra practice of vocabulary and grammar, which corresponds to the unit. So, for example, if you're going through unit one, you could direct them to the app to practice unit one for their extra extra homework as well. OK, so we are now at the end of the webinar. Does anyone have any questions? I'm going to have a quick look back to see if anyone's written anything. Um, OK, so the ones I have on. Yeah. So as Annabella rightly said, the books that only have the one code, that code is for the app and not the portal as I said earlier some of them don't have the digital access there are two forms of the course book so it might just depend on what what your school has given you um what else uh if we do not have the book how can we enter the portal um so I don't know if you have your teacher's book with you um or if the students have the students books um but yeah, they, they're just on the inside cover, but I'm not sure what you can do if you don't actually have the physical books with you. Um, the students can't share a code as I believe that the code is specific to that book. So each scratch off code will be completely different. Um, also, there will be another webinar in May, which focuses, because I know uh, Marlena just said, what tips do you recommend to assess speaking online? So we'll have another uh, webinar based around gold experience and how we can actually teach uh, different skills and strategies for the exams as well. 
Okay. Uh, oh, one more question. So we can't create a class with only the app code. We can't, unfortunately, you can't create a code with the app class because the app is separate. That is just for your phone or your tablet, for example, for the students. But if you have the uh, digitally ready, you'll see two codes inside of your book. Okay, so do you remember that English.com has a bank of free online resources to help you through this time? So there's lots of webinars, as I said, there's another one uh, in May, which I'm doing, which focuses a little bit more on gold experience and how to actually prepare for exams with it, both in the classroom and online as well. There's blogs, classroom resources and professional development. So just head to the website on the screen here. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And um, remember that you'll be emailed your attendance certificates within two weeks of the webinar. Um, and also this webinar is recorded online if you missed something and wanted to go back and have a look as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe wherever you are and have a good day. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are as well. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.